Hello everyone, Lawrence here from Unicorn Bikes with my sixth attempt at recording this video because it's so cold my batteries keep dying. So, a couple of weeks ago I received the Pirelli Scorpion Enduro S and the Scorpion Enduro R mountain bike tires for testing. So I've been riding them for about two and a half weeks now. I was also very lucky to be able to do an interview with Samuele from Pirelli, I hope I pronounced that right this time. And it was a very enlightening experience just to find out more about their new products because Pirelli has been doing tires for a really long time. They have a lot of knowledge in-house, but they haven't been doing mountain bike tires. So what I wanted to know is how did they go about designing these? And it turns out it's just one big team that does tires and they do anything from Formula One tires to motorcycle tires, car tires, and now mountain bike tires. So the same guys developing the compounds for Formula One are developing the compounds for your enduro bike. That's really cool because there is a lot of knowledge and whenever people with a lot of knowledge and experience try something new, there's potential there to, I wouldn't say revolutionize the market, but they can bring some new stuff to the table. So that's really interesting. And so with that in mind, I went on to testing these tires. This video will be three parts after this intro. So first up, I'm just gonna give you guys numbers, then I'm gonna talk about feel, and then at the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can win one or two or three of these tires. Um, so stick around for that. All right, so first up, the measurements, just physical sizing. I have 650B wheels on this bike. They're 2.6 inches wide. And what's really nice with Pirelli is they're like, okay, if you put this tire on a 35 millimeter wide rim, the tire will be 65 millimeters wide. I put mine on a 30 millimeter rim because I prefer a slightly more rounded tire. And guess what? The width of these tires, 65 front and rear, awesome. However, the widest point, so where the knobs stick out most on the S was 68 and on the R was 67 millimeters. Just something to keep in mind. Fitting the Scorpion Enduros on my DT Swiss rims was, I wouldn't say effortless, they were very tight, but that also means you can pump them up really easily. And I actually prefer that to a tire that slips on the rim super easy, but then you can't actually put air in. So fitment, perfect, I think, both size and just fitment on the rim as well. So just like last time when I tested tires, I got this thingy out to measure durometers. Pirelli was very quick to inform me that, of course, there's a difference between static durometers, so just pushing it against the tire and seeing what number pops up and how the tire actually interacts at speed with high speed impact and low speed impact. Think about it as high and low speed compression on your fork, for example. Tires behave in a similar way. So this is just a comparison number. And I'll also show you the numbers of the Vittorias and the Maxxis tires that I was testing previously. Keep in mind, temperatures are near freezing. So it's been really cold. All my testing was at like freezing temperatures, slightly below, slightly above, but basically minus five to plus five degrees Celsius. Now, as I said, these are a single compound tire, which means the entire tire is basically made up of the same rubber. With the Vittorias, there were four compounds, and what they do is they have a stiffer base layer with a very soft, grippy layer on top. Now, obviously, as the soft, grippy layer on top wears off, you just get hard rubber underneath, and so performance degrades very quickly. With these, it's a single rubber thingy. So as the tires wear down, the rubber grip stays the same, which means you can buy these in winter or win them at the end of the video. Ride them all winter, wear them down, and then come summertime, you have a semi-slick, which still has good grip. However, I did do my testing with brand new DHR-DHF combos and with the Moda Martello combo. And I also did a Enduro S and Enduro R combo for Pirelli. And they were slightly slower because they just don't have that peak grip. And so for my testing, I had three runs. I have a very well rolling run, so more flow tracky, but it's a natural sort of flow track style thing. I also did really off camber stuff and I did very rudy terrain. Now about the rudy stuff, it's irrelevant really my testing because it was just so slippery with it being damp and cold and the numbers just don't make sense. And yeah, that's all I can really say about it. Um, they were very fast rolling. I was very impressed with that. They roll very well while still offering good braking traction and acceleration traction. Um, and then on the off camber stuff, because it's a more rounded tire on these 30 mil rims, 
they were all right. Um, not particularly better than a Minion, but a little bit better than the Moda by Vittoria. So it's about the same, really, when it comes to that. Performance is basically on par with everything else at first, but then it will get better than everything else as all tires wear down. So that's a really good thing to keep in mind for park rats, for example, people who just want to buy a pair of tires, ride them all year and be happy about them. Now, I really wish I could show you guys more riding footage, but it was dark really for most of my riding. I'm also recording this video in the dark, which is why we're inside right now. Um, so sorry, not a lot of riding footage in this video, but I'll do my best to make it as interesting as possible with some B-roll. So now with all these boring numbers out of the way, how are they actually like to ride? We'll start with the S, which I ran up front and I also ran SS, so front and rear. And I liked it. I really did. It's a fairly predictable tire. The knob spacing isn't too wide, which means that as you lean the bike in or as you just slam on brakes or do the sort of stuff you do with a mountain bike, it's a very gradual transition from having grip to not having grip. That's something I personally really like. There are tires out there which give an awful amount of grip at first, but then it just drops off and you're on your face. With these, it's more gradual. I really like it. Very predictable, easy to ride tires. Again, slightly slower and I did crash on these quite a bit as well because it was just really cold and really slippery and I tend to crash a lot. The R for the rear was also a really good tire. As I already mentioned, it rolled very well um, and I, I appreciate that. As someone who's not riding an e-bike who has to pedal up stuff himself, I prefer a faster rolling tire to something than a DHR for example. So it did well, but it still offered good cornering grip and good braking. Um, of course, smaller knobs and more of them closely together does mean they do clog up with mud. So if you're going to ride really muddy terrain or soft terrain, as Pirelli calls it, um, you should probably get the Enduro S's for your bike. However, if you're riding hard or just hard pack or dry terrain, maybe get the Enduro M, which I wasn't able to test, and then an R in the back. That works really well as well. So then for a conclusion on Pirelli's first Enduro tires, I personally like them. They're very predictable to ride, easy to fit, no puncture during any of my testing, and overall they roll well, but still offer a lot of grip, although not quite as much as brand new tires. That said, they'll last a lot longer and they'll be more likable, more predictable throughout their lifespan. So from a consumer point of view, these are awesome. From a racer point of view, maybe not right now. And so now we're at the end of the video and you guys probably want to know what you can do to get these yourself as a Christmas gift from Pirelli and me to you. All you have to do is comment on this video. Um, entries open up right now and I'll close them at Christmas Day 2020 for those wondering. I'll pick a random comment using some random number generator and I'll reply to that comment and then ask you to send me an email or send me a message on Instagram, for example, and then we'll figure out everything else. It's open worldwide and if you're watching this after Christmas, the giveaway is already closed. So if you want to get notified sooner with new giveaways, just subscribe. Why aren't you subscribed? You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Subscribe hey, for giveaways. Hit the bell icon for God knows what reason YouTube invented that. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.